Hey guys, this is Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking to you about should you buy that coin? As a coin dealer or coin collector, oftentimes you run into situations where you question should you buy it or should you pass on it? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about a big coin that we had an opportunity to buy. Let's get this video started. So we were on our way home from Ohio and we had the opportunity to buy a really nice rare coin that we could have offered to you guys but we ended up passing on it. And in this video we're going to try to describe myself, the reason why I passed on it and hopefully give you guys a little bit of insight next time you guys go buy a coin at a show or a shop or maybe if you're buying something locally. You have to book in sometimes what you can make on it, what the dealer can make on it and is it fair to the market. Most times we look at things that may be inaccurate or we buy coins that we shouldn't buy or uh, you know, was it the right coin for you at that time for the customer base that you have? Let's talk about all that right now and let's fill out this whiteboard. All right guys, so the first thing we have to address is what coin was it? So the first coin, which is the only coin, is this 1879cc Morgan dollar. It was Mint State 64. PCGS and it was also a cap die. So cap dies are a lot more expensive than uh, you know just regular uh, CC mint marks. Cap dies are kind of have that mushy, uh, grainy looking uh, mint mark on the reverse of the Morgan dollar. And when you look up comps, you can see that these sell for a lot more. And so right off the bat, I had to make sure I was checking what the cap die prices were because he was asking a lot. And the second question you have to ask yourself is, what does the IPO look like? So when you're bringing coins to the market, you're going to want coins that everybody universally loves. So there's some categories of IPO that you want to stray away from because most people will not pay the premium for that coin. Was the coin dark? Was the coin with nice toning? Was the coin white, blast white? Or was the coin off-white? Well, this coin was off-white. This coin was graded probably about 10 years ago and uh, it was probably pulled from an original roll and put in a PCGS holder. You could see from the original haze on the coin and uh, it was overall a nice coin. It wasn't blast white, um, nobody dipped it or it wasn't held in a pristine place for a while. Um, it didn't have super nice toning and what you try to need to avoid is dark coins. Dark coins uh, most times need to be well under sheet, it needs to make so much sense for you to buy it that uh, you almost have an incentive to because like I said again there's a lot of people out there that just don't want to buy dark coins there's not a huge market for them especially when you're talking about a mint state 64 cap die 79 cc so the next question you ask yourself is what client base do I have and what price range do we normally sell coins at so we normally sell coins anywhere between a hundred dollars to three thousand dollars so right off the bat, to me, that is a little bit of a toughie, right? So there's some dealers out there that only sell 25 or 50 or 100 coins a year, and they only sell coins over $10,000. So when they see this coin, they know exactly where it needs to go. For me, I didn't know exactly where it needed to go, and that was one of my hangups in this coin deal. Another thing is um, backing into a deal. So backing into a deal basically means... If you could take a photo of the coin and send it to somebody and they can give you a price they would buy it at, that's you figuring out the deal before you buy the coin. Sometimes that's helpful, especially in these cases, because you don't want to hold up this much capital if you don't already have someone that's going to buy it that's in place. And so he told me at the shop, he said, please don't take a photo of the coin. So right off the bat, you cannot go to a, a bigger dealer. You cannot go to an auction house with this coin. You have to say, I'm willing to buy it right now with no client. And that, for me, was very tough. So, this, the next question is, how much capital do you have? So, when you're going into coin deals, say you have 50000 or 100000 or 200000 you know, all of it's really relative to, should I invest this much money into this coin? Because I have so many other opportunities out there. If you were sitting on a million dollars cash today, and someone brought this coin to you, and you can make 500 bucks on it or 1000 bucks on it, and you're like, you know what, my cash is not working for me right now. This looks like a great opportunity. But say you're walking into the coin deal and you only have 20000 Or you only have 30000 
that for you could be a little bit tougher because that's half of your working capital. You know, there's, tomorrow you can get another coin deal that leaves a lot more margin while also, you know, giving you a little bit more incentive. Sometimes you could buy, you know, twenty or fifteen thousand dollars worth of coins that are anywhere between a hundred and three thousand dollars that your customers would love. So there's that trade-off there. Do you buy that one coin that you're looking for for a customer, or do you have a lot of customers that you are, uh, you know, servicing? So that for us, I'm gonna circle what we had at the time. That's just being straightforward. I had thirty thousand uh, dollars that we could have spent. Uh, on the way home from Ohio. So the next question was, what was the coin shop owner asking for this coin? Well, he was asking thirteen thousand five hundred bucks. So thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. And he said the reason why I'm asking that much is because the most recent comp, without the CAC approval, was fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. So look at that, that's, Drew, that's 900 bucks, man. You can make 900 bucks in this coin, dude. I mean, don't you wanna make that money? Well, sometimes it's not that straightforward. There's so many other things that play uh, a role in it, right? So 14.4 is what someone was willing to pay in an auction where there was a lot of eyes and a lot of people that were really excited about the coin. You're finding one person to buy the coin instead of having a lot of, you know, a lot of, people looking at that one coin and then it ended up being after hammer price 14,400. So there's buyer's premium, there's so many other things that go in, involved into this price and sometimes it's not as straightforward as some people might think. I'm not going to get 14,400 for it. I'm going to get hit with fees either from eBay or from my website or uh, and we also have to pay shipping or someone wants a discount. We're going to get to that a little bit later. So what's gray sheet for the coin? A lot of dealers look at gray sheet. Sometimes that's like, hey, bro, I paid 12000 for it, which is gray sheet. And I don't have a client for it. I sat on it for a month. Please, you know, please save me. Give me my 12000 back. You know, so sometimes gray sheet's useful because certain coins are very desirable. And you can go to a dealer and say, hey, I paid 12000 Will you pay 12000 And they'll say, yes, sir, I will. So 12000 wasn't very important in this deal because look at that. We're $1,500 over gray sheet just for me to buy it. What a CAC, and how does that play a role? So CAC is very important. There's a lot of people that don't like the CAC sticker or it's controversial, but when you bring it to auction, people pay more. So that's something that I can't debate if, uh, if it's legitimate or not. People like the coin, they like the sticker, so they'll pay more money. So I was looking at comps, and if the coin were to CAC, I was seeing anywhere between 15000 to 16,000 at auction. And so when you're in the moment and you're looking at a Morgan dollar and you've seen thousands of Morgan dollars, you kind of get to get a little bit of percentages involved. So do I think 25% of it was no, that it wouldn't CAC or 75% of it was a yes, that it would CAC. You start to toss that back and forth. To me, this coin looked like a 50-50. There was a big abrasion on the face, but other than that, the fields are really clean. And so if I thought the coin would CAC unequivocally, if it almost looked like a 65, I would have just bought it there, right there. Because, uh, you know, when you're sending the coin into CAC, I think it's 130 bucks plus the, uh, you know, the shipping. So paying that $130 and then, you know, you're adding a thousand or two thousand dollars onto the value of the coin, that can be very helpful for you, right? And so for me, like I said, though, this one felt a little 50-50. Having that big mark on the face, especially for a 64, it held me back. I thought that this coin had a 50-50 chance of it passing or it not passing. So, uh, you know, CAC wasn't really a big thing for me here because, like I said, I have to be very convinced for me to buy it. We talked about sales. We talked about if it would CAC or not. I don't think it would CAC, um, but based on me buying it or not buying it. So... I was leaning more towards no because you know the 50-50 was involved, but I didn't end up buying it, so I didn't end up taking that risk. Um, there's a lot of you know that we have overhead, we have a lot of things that are involved, and sometimes taking things out to chance for me wasn't an option on this coin. So let's talk about you know if we ended up buying the coin, you know, for 13.5 and 14.4 is where the uh, you know the most recent comp was. Um, say you sold this coin at 14.4, what would the fees be associated with it? 
Well, let's just break down what the fees are from eBay and our website. So our website's almost 4%. And eBay is 7% when it's over 7.5K, I believe. And this one exceeded that. And so we also have to take into account shipping. So for our insurance, Every $10,000, we have to pay $28 of insurance on top of what we pay for shipping. So we're going to have to overnight this package for our insurance company just to insure it. That's $70. And let's say we're insuring it for $14.5 $14 or almost $15. Let's just raise it up to $42 bucks because we're close to insuring it for $15K. So... $112 is shipping for the coin. Then we have 7% right here for 7% um, from eBay or 4% from our website. Let me do a little calculating real quick and get right back to you. So 14.4 times 0.93, which is eBay. The number would be, man, I don't got any space here. The number would be 13,000. $392. So $13,392 after fees. Drew, buy that coin. You know, if you listed on eBay for $14,400 after 7% fees, you're down to $13,392. And then you got to ship the coin. Or you charge the customer to ship the coin. Either way, it looks like you're losing money. So not only when you buy the coin, you have to price it higher on eBay just to make a profit or above what people are willing to pay at auction. Uh, you're also, you know, you might have to sit on the coin longer, right? You're, you're, you're basically going to ask more than what the market wanted for this coin um, at, at a heritage auction or whatever. I can leave that on screen. So let's just run the website real quick. So 14.4 times 0 0.96 is 13... 1,824. So we don't charge you $112 to ship this coin on our website. We charge you $6. So, bam, six bucks for shipping. So we're at $13,830. $13,830 minus $112 minus $13,500. We're at a big whopping. $218 profit. So, to me, if I wanted to ask what the market bared for it, which is $14,400, I would either lose money on eBay or I'd make $218 on our website. And also, sometimes we get reached out to by people. Hey, man, you know, you're asking a lot on your website. Can I get a discount? And sometimes I have to say, no, bro, I'm not making any money. So there's a few things that get involved when you're taking a look at a coin. Should you buy it? Should you not buy it? For this one, it didn't make much sense to me. Um, I hope this was a little bit more informational to you because when you go into a deal, you end up uh, sometimes paying a lot more than what you think you do. And then when all the fees come out and the shipping comes out and the discounts come out and what things realize at auctions uh, you know, are available, it doesn't look like a whole lot of money. And so... Was this a good decision or was it a bad decision? I would say it's uh, your own decision. If you want to have a great coin and you want to ask a little bit more money for it and make a little bit more money on it, then that's great. It's a rare coin. It's tough to find. If you don't want to buy it, then why beat yourself up about it? You're not making a whole lot of money asking what the market bared for it or if you want to ask a little bit more on it and you sit on it for a while, you know, you're just taking a risk here. So. Was it a good decision or a bad decision? It doesn't matter. It's your decision. It's your coin business. At the end of the day, it's about what you want to do for your customers. For us, I felt like if we asked more than what the market bared for, we might take away from our customers and what we could buy for them in the future. If I almost tied up you know, $13,500, I could have bought 25, 30 nice coins for you guys. So uh, thank you guys for taking a look at all the stuff that I laid out for you, we hope you really enjoyed this and we hope you learned a lot. If you need to learn a little bit more, I can always answer some comments down below because we want to make sure you guys learn as much as possible about the coin business and how you can succeed in it.
Thank you guys for taking a look at today's video. Like we said, if you need any questions answered about what we wrote and talked about today, make sure to leave those down below. Like this video if you want more videos like this. We're just trying to give you guys a backstage pass of what we work with on a daily basis in terms of uh, being a coin dealer or maybe in your case a coin collector. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We're coming out with videos every single week and we want you guys to be a part. We'll see you guys in the next video.